On the night of November 14, 1965, Mary Ellen Diener and her younger sister Brenda went to the half-hour laundromat in Mansfield, Ohio. When the two ran out of change, Mary Ellen went alone to another laundromat a few blocks away. When Mary Ellen did not return long after her departure, young Brenda went to their nearby grandmother's house worried for her sister. When their grandmother heard what had happened, she ordered Brenda to stay put while she walked to the other laundromat. What she would come upon was a crime scene. Today's story is about Mary Ellen Diener and the horrific man who murdered her in cold blood. Welcome to Curious True Crime Tuesday. Mary Ellen was a normal 14-year-old girl with six siblings. Her sister remembers her as a smiley and giggly child who loved to hang out with her friends when she wasn't doing house chores. Unfortunately, November 14, 1965, was the last time Mary Ellen was seen alive. So what happened to her? On her way to the second laundromat, Mary Ellen was grabbed by a local named Lester Eubanks. She screamed at the top of her lungs trying to fight back. Lester didn't like this and pulled out his gun, firing at poor Mary Ellen twice to stop her screams. After that, Lester left the crime scene and went home to get ready to go dancing. 45 minutes later, Lester was ready to go and on his way, walked past the crime scene again. This time he heard Mary Ellen crying for help. She was still alive. For some reason, Lester was determined to become a murderer. He picked up a nearby brick and well, I think you can guess the rest. Lester Eubanks was already a criminal before Mary Ellen. He had two charges against him for sex offenses, including one against a minor. Was this Lester's intent with Mary Ellen? Well, in truth, no one knows. Lester was born October 31st, 1943, being only 22 at the time of the unaliving of Mary Ellen. The day after the crime, Lester was found by local police and confessed to everything. The following year, he was sentenced to death. However, the Supreme Court abolished the death penalty and his sentence was changed to life in prison. Lester was a very talented artist and was recognized in prison for his skills. So much so that he was put into an honors program to try and reform inmates. This meant under certain circumstances, Lester could venture outside of the prison. Because of this, Lester won many art shows and won awards for them. The people at these art shows had no idea he was a murderer. December 7, 1973, Lester and four other inmates were permitted to go on a Christmas shopping trip. All inmates were dressed as casual civilians and given money to spend on gifts. The only rule was to be back by 2 p.m. Instead of all staying together as a group, they were permitted to be alone. Yes, folks, you heard me right, alone. Well, a few hours later, when it was time to meet back up, Lester didn't show up. Lester Eubanks avoided the death penalty, life in prison, and now prison altogether. This didn't shock his inmates because Lester was a loner, but also able to camouflage into a crowd. Poor Mary Ellen's family was informed with the escape. They were baffled and shocked and, of course, extremely angry. Police believe this was premeditated on Lester's part and planned months in advance. His visitation list was alarming to say the least. He went from a few visitors once a month to once a week right before the escape. If only someone had thought this was suspicious sooner. His family and friends were asked multiple times if they had any information on his whereabouts and all failed to supply any information. A warrant was put out nationwide for his arrest. If he was picked up anywhere, he was to be immediately detained and brought back to Ohio. Despite a long and large manhunt, no clues to his whereabouts were found until 20 years later. In December of 1993, a detective commander was curious about the Eubanks case and decided to look it up to see if he had been caught yet. What he found was even more alarming. He discovered that there was absolutely no warrants out for Lester Eubanks' arrest. The federal warrant had been removed from the database. With no warrant in the system, had Lester been stopped for anything at any time, he would have been let go. Thankfully, after the find, the warrants were put back into the system. The police of Mansfield decided it was time to take more steps into finding this guy and put the case on America's Most Wanted in September of 1994. That night, the police got a call from a woman claiming to know Lester as a friend back in Los Angeles in the 70s. Lester ended up living with his cousin's widow named Kay Banks. When police showed up at her door, she didn't want to be taken in for harboring a fugitive, so she cooperated. She said he did used to live with her in LA, 
but was no longer there. Kay was originally from Ohio and married Daryl Banks, who was a popular singer in the 60s, and unfortunately was shot and killed. Kay wanted to feel some sort of family aspect again and reached out to Lester while he was in jail, and they became pen pals. Kay tells police that after his escape, Lester hid out in Michigan to see how diligent the search for him would be. He would paint houses for money. A few weeks passed and someone put him on a bus because he had no money and paid for a trip to California. Lester told Kay that when he arrived in California, the bus he was on was pulled over by police. He thought it was the end of the line. However, the police were only looking for illegal fruit being brought over the state lines. As the police walked off the bus, Lester thought to himself, this is it, I'm finally free. Kay was surprised when he showed up at her door. She had no idea he planned to escape. He went by the alias Victor Young and got a hunting license to use as his ID since you didn't need fingerprints to obtain it. Kay said Lester was a real bully and she was intimidated by him. After some time, she decided she couldn't take it anymore from him and needed him out of her life. Kay lied to Lester saying that she got a call from the FBI asking about him. Kay told police about a place in Gardena where Lester had worked and may have still been working. After going to Gardena, police were informed that Lester had only been held up there until the 80s. After this, everything went cold again. Around 2003, some police were going through old escape cases and found an address for Lester's father, Mose Eubanks. His father was the only known close relative living in the area at the time, so police went out to speak with him. He told police he would speak about anything they wanted except Lester. Mose said, there's nothing anyone can do to bring back that little girl. So police asked him, do you believe justice was done in the case of your son? And Mo said, people can change and go on to start new lives. And I pray for Lester every day, but that's all I'll say about him. Police talked a little more with Mose and realized he knew exactly where Lester was. A while later, a detective with Mansfield police talked to an informant during that summer, she had been out to Moe's house. She said while she was there, the phone rang and Moe's excused himself and left the room. When he came back, he said he was on the phone with his son in Alabama who was taking a break from painting a house. Police looked at Lester's siblings, but none lived in Alabama at the time. Police ended up getting a subpoena to get Moe's phone records. During that time frame, there were several calls coming from a troubled youth center, and there was a black male with the same description, age, and height as Lester. He had no driver's license, and his social security number kept coming back as false. This got police thinking it was Lester. Unfortunately, a few months had already passed since the suspect left. It's simply tragic that Mary Ellen didn't get to live a life, but Lester Eubanks did. In July of 2018, Lester was put on the 15 most wanted list. Making this list means you're the worst of the worst. Lester has friends and family in Michigan, Ohio, Florida, Alabama, Texas, California, and Washington. Lester also has a huge scar on his right arm. It's about an inch and wraps around and it's thick. This can help identify him. The fact that he is a very talented painter could also help identify him. The United States Marshals Service is offering a reward for $25,000 for any information that leads to an arrest. This man doesn't deserve to be free. He took the life of 14-year-old Mary Ellen Diener and deserves to be back in prison for the remainder of his life. If you have any information at all, please contact US Marshals at 8664-WANTED. Thanks for watching today, folks. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, and click the notification bell. And remember, Stay curious.